This video is for 12.4, so there is no spark today. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. So today we are going to be working on finding the area. I, oh, there is a typo in that, and I can't change that. That's a picture from the book. I can find the area of any composite picture. So we'll just change that ourselves here. There we go. I can find the area of any composite figure. So a three today is you can find the composite figure. So composite just means it's made up of different shapes. You might have a square here and a rectangle here and a triangle on top and they're put together and you find the different pieces, put them together. So if you can find the area of these composite figures when it tells you all of the numbers around the outside, that's a three. If you can find the dimensions when maybe sometimes it's missing and it might say like this side's 10 and this much is three and you have to figure out that this part is seven to make it 10, that's a four. If you can find it when it just uses rectangles then or squares, then that's a two. So a three is using the triangles, the trapezoids, everything. And a one is you can just find the different shapes when they are separate. So our goal today, all composite figures, Put together so if it have you have to find the missing ones and that bumps you up to the four today so you can find the area of composite figures by breaking them into familiar triangles such as triangles sorry familiar figures such as triangles or quadrilaterals so we have learned how to find the area of all sorts of quadrilaterals so we oh i still have my white on so we have learned squares we have done rectangles, we've done parallelograms, we have done trapezoids, we have done different types of triangles. So we want to turn it into the fewest amount of shapes that we can in order to do this. So I could, right, I could cut this shape here and I could cut it here and then I could say, I'm going to cut this rectangle into more pieces and I'm going to cut this rectangle into triangles, but then I just have to find that many shapes. So when we are doing this, we want to split it into the fewest shapes possible. So here we have this figure of a city park and the dimensions are given. So let's just go through. So here we have the base of it is nine. We've got two, four, two, two. So we don't know this slanted side and two. So hopefully we won't need that slanted side. Um, so what kind of shapes, sorry, what kind of shapes can you split this into here? So take a look at the park. How could we divide it up into shapes that you recognize? So I can see if I cut horizontally here that I have a rectangle and I have a trapezoid. So another way we could cut would be to go down this way and I could just have this one and then I could cut here. But again, we want to make the fewest shapes possible. So it looks like our easiest way is to cut horizontally across that middle section so we get a top and a bottom. So what type of quadrilaterals do we have? So this one on the top, what would you call that? I notice it has a top and a bottom that are parallel and the sides are going to slant into each other. So what is this one here called? So here we have a trapezoid. Oops, that's an A, trapezoid. And then on the bottom, what shape do we have? We have a rectangle. So we want to find the area of the trapezoid. We want to find the area of the rectangle. And then we're going to put them together and find the sum or the total area. So let's start with our rectangle. So see if you can remember the formula for the area of a rectangle. So it is base times height or length times width. So our base here is nine. So I can see, I don't want to maybe, I mean, we can use these numbers on the top, but this only tells me five and this tells me four. I have to put those together. So we want this whole thing is nine 
and the height of it is two. So nine times two is going to tell us our rectangle here. So now we want to do this top shape, the trapezoid. So if you remember from the other day, when we're finding trapezoids, we want to add our bases together to get that entire parallelogram. So this base from here to here is five, and our top base is two. So we're going to add our bases, and then our height to connect straight up from our right angle is two, so the base times the height, and then we have to cut it in half. Otherwise, we're really finding two of these trapezoids. So here, let me move my head over here. So right, this was five, this is two. Five and two together makes seven times by the height, but we wanna cut it back in half so that all we have is just that one trapezoid there. So that is going to be how we find our trapezoid area. So here is our rectangle area. Here's our trapezoid area. And then we take our two answers and we're going to add them together since it's one shape and find the sum. And that will give us our total surface area, not our surface area, our total area. So go ahead and try task one and come back when you are ready to do task two. Hey, task two has the roof of this building here. And so we can see, right, how could we divide this up? So I want you to take a look and see what kind of lines would you put on there to split this up. So I can see that this just keeps on going. And so we've got one, two, three, four. So there's a trapezoid. And one, two, three, four. There's another trapezoid if we could figure that all out. So there's one way we could do it. Uh, let's try going straight down from here. So here we could get a rectangle, and here these two sides are parallel. So here's a trapezoid. Oh, we could cut across this way and this way and make different shapes here. So we can make rectangles, trapezoids out of this rooftop here. We could even, right, we could cut across here. We could cut here and here. We could cut this way if we wanted to. So we can make triangles. We can make trapezoids. We can make rectangles. So lots of different shapes. So we just want to pick one of them and decide that's the one we're going to use, find our missing measurements if there are any, and go from there. So they book chose to split it up this way. So they just drew one horizontal line across here. So let's identify our shapes. We can see this one is six by four. So here we have a rectangle. And this one I know is 14, but this whole thing is 10 and we only have this much. So we're going to have to find this part here. So that's what I mean by the level four is if you can find these missing ones, then that's a four. If you can just do the math once you've been told that, then that's a three. Hey, we have our triangle here. So this part here is four. And then we need our height to the top here, which we will have to figure out. So we've got a missing height here that we need to find. So we've got triangles and rectangles. So we wanna find the area. So let's just start up here at the top. So this piece here, so our base is six, the height is four. So our first one, we're doing six whoops, times four, and then we're going to add on our next one. So let's come down here to our rectangle at the bottom. So we can see this entire base is 14. And we know this whole thing is 10. So it says this is four, so that means this is four. So if this is four, what does this need to be to make this whole thing equal 10? We know the whole thing is 10. Four plus, we're looking for the height here. How can I get this height by itself? 
Well, I can take four away from both sides. So we're left with six. So this side right here is six. So to find this big rectangle, we want to do 14 times six. Now remember these are rectangles, so we don't cut them in half. We just do that to triangles and parallel or in trapezoids that when we double them makes a parallelogram and we cut it in half. And then we're going to add on. So this is our little rectangle, right? This is our bigger rectangle. And now we need our triangle. So we've got these three shapes here. So I can see this base that it's sitting on is four. And we're going to multiply that by the height, which we've got to find. So from here all the way over is 14. We don't know this piece. So do we know this one right here? So take a look. Do we know this piece here? Can you see another place on this picture that has this same measurement that will look exactly the same? So when I'm looking for it, I look up and down from it. Oh, right here we have the same line. So the height, this part is six. So six plus what will be 14? That's eight. So this one is eight. So base times height. And then remember, we wanna cut that in half here. So when I do this, this tells me the little rectangle. This tells me the big rectangle. This tells me the triangle. And then I add them all together. So go ahead and try that out and then come back and we're going to try it a different way. Hey, so are there other ways that we can split the shape up? So we went this way. Are there different ways we could have done this problem? So this one, what if we split it this way? Let's see if we can solve it like this. So now we just have two shapes. We have this rectangle and this trapezoid that's just been flipped on its side. So let's find the rectangle, the base and width are six and 10. So six times 10 is 60. So we've done that part. And then we're adding on our trapezoid. So we need to find our base. So I know this was six, this was eight. It tells me that, oh, Oh, I was like, we didn't find this over here, but we did. That was the triangle. I got really confused for a second. I was like, we never found this part, but it just was cut up different. Okay. So we know this is six. So this is eight to make the whole thing 14. This part is four and the whole thing is 10. So that means this part is six. So here's base one and base two. So we need base one plus base two. And then we're going to times that by the height. So the right angle that connects the two sides is eight. And then we're going to cut that in half. So we wanna do all of this together and then add it on to 60. So there is more than one way we can do this problem and get to the same answer. So go ahead and complete task two and come back when you are ready to do task three. Hey, task three tells us that Paula is painting the side of a house and needs to know how much paint to buy. Each gallon of paint will cover a certain number of square feet. What is the area in square feet of the side of the house? So if we look at this house, so we notice, right, it's got this big rectangle side here. It has this triangle here, but it has this window here and we do not want to paint that window. So what type of shapes do we have? Well, on the bottom, we have a rectangle, but it's missing a piece. And then we have this triangle up here as well. So what do you think we should do with this window? So take a second and think about that. So this window, I am going to just treat this like a rectangle. 
Then I'm going to find the area of the window and just take that out of my final answer. So we want to find the area of each of these shapes. So here we have our rectangle on the bottom. So the base is 9 and the height is 30. So we want to do 30 times 9 to find this rectangle. Then we've got this triangle up here. We know the whole entire triangle is the same as the house, which is 30. So we're going to add on 30. So there's the base. And then our height is from the right angle is 6. So 30 times 6. But remember, it's a triangle. So we're going to cut it in half. So here's the rectangle. Here's the triangle. And then we need to take out the window. The window is three by six, so we're going to take away three times six. We're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to add these together, and then take away three times six. So go ahead and complete task three and find the area of this whole house without the window. And then if you need any other help completing your lesson for today, Please let me know and we can set up a time to meet together.